So I've been working on the electrical system for the uh, teardrop camper for a while now. You know, going back and forth on different things. I was having issues with my inverter system and it really just got me fed up. And I decided, you know what, I'm gonna rethink this whole thing. I wanna go back to what I was thinking originally, even though it's a little bit more money um, and the whole unit is a little bit bigger. So I picked up a Victron MultiPlus inverter charger and I decided to switch from 12 volt, which is what I had designed this whole system for, to 24 volts. Initially I was thinking 12 volts because a lot of the things that I'm gonna plug in are 12 volt, but the way I started thinking about it, 24 volts makes a lot of sense. I already have two Linac batteries. I work with Linac on this project. They have supplied me with uh, two of their 200 amp hour true series batteries. And since I have two of them, I can connect them in series. I was going to connect them in parallel. For me, a parallel setup would look something like this. Uh, 12 volts at 400 amp hours, which would give me roughly 5,000 watts. Um, and in terms of wiring, that means the negative on one battery is connected to the negative on the other, and the positive is connected to the other as well. Now, if I wanted to go 24 volts, then I would need to set them up in series. So 24 volts at 200 amps, which would also roughly give me 5,000 watts. That means the positive would connect to the negative of the other battery. With 24 volts, that also enables me to uh, use smaller wire and everything will run cooler. And I'll also get more charge out of my solar charge controllers, which I wasn't even thinking about. That's kind of a nice added benefit because there's less amps going through. So I can actually hook up more solar panels here if I wanted to eventually. Now previously, too, I was planning on using, this is a Linac charger. This enables you to charge the batteries, bringing in 288 watts. Um, watt hours per hour, but now when I've got the Victron MultiPlus, I can charge up the batteries quicker. So this is the Victron MultiPlus, 24 volt, 50 amps, and I was afraid that it would be like too large, but now when I'm looking at it, it's not that bad. Um, it's not that heavy either, and once it's mounted like vertically, it needs a little bit of space, um, like about a decimeter, a couple inches on each side and at the top. So you just have to account for that in the cabinet. So this unit comes with monitoring, but you have to buy an additional piece to be able to access it. <laughs> so I just had to pick that up. That's gonna be here tomorrow. Uh, you know, all these little things that you don't think about that it just like adds on and adds on. But anyway, so that's coming. So then you'll be able to see it and access that, which is already built into the unit. It's like doing this whole thing has really made me realize just how important it has been to set up this temporary setup and test everything out. You know, here I just have some OSB boards on top of sawhorses and a piece of MDF, uh, and I have screwed everything down, and I'm so glad that I've been able to like do it this way. Granted, once everything gets in the cabinet and the way it's going to be, you know, I might have to redo a couple of things, you know, cut some different wire. I might lose a little bit of money in wire, that kind of thing. But I wouldn't be here right now if I hadn't come through all of these changes. I have rewired this many different times. It's like you have to go through the process. So I'm really glad to be at this point right now. And I want to do a couple more tests, but I can't wait to <laughs> get this all figured out so I can disassemble this and then bring the trailer back in again and start working on that more. So this is an 1800 watt continuous generator from Ryobi. I can use this to charge up my batteries if there's no shore power, if there's no, if there's no sun. So let me start it up and we'll see if we can get any charge into the batteries. So basically I have the generator hooked up to a, an extension cord here to a switch so that it can control with the short power. So I'm gonna turn it on now uh, so it can start charging up the batteries. So I'm getting uh, 950, 965, 970 watts going into the batteries right now. So that was the sound right there, uh, running the generating generator and drawing a thousand watts into the battery. So it's just like it's a little bit loud, so it's, I mean it's a little bit annoying, but you know, you can get a thousand watts in one hour, so that's pretty good. Um, if you had to, not bad. This is the fridge uh, that I was planning to put in the camper. Um, I believe this can be used for 12 or 24 volts, so I want to do a test um, and see if I can hook it up to the 24 volt system. So setting up some temporary wire here to uh, connect the fridge. This is 16 gauge wire, but this is only gonna be pulling two amps. Okay, so got the, uh, the fridge hooked up. 
to the 24 volt system. It's drawing, let's see, 32 watts, 26.74 amps. So I'm using a car accessory port here. So it's, it's nice because this fridge can accept 24 volts. I don't have to, you know, step down the voltage or anything like that. I can go directly from the system into the fridge. So this accessory port is later on going to have to be labeled as a 24 volt accessory port. You wouldn't want to plug anything else in there, like an electric blanket or something that's going to be running on 12 volt. <laughs> so you want to make sure you get that right. <laughs> so right now this is drawing one amp um, because of the 24 volts. Like if it was uh, hooked up to a 12 volt system, it would be drawing two amps. So just did a little quick calculation. Um, if you have these batteries, about 5,000 watt hour batteries, if they are fully charged, uh, you should be able to run this fridge for about 12 days. That is if nothing else is hooked up to the battery, of course, and there's no solar coming in, in which case um, you could run it forever. <laughs> So this arrived in the mail. This is the dongle, the Bluetooth connector that enables me to monitor um, and control the state of the, the inverter and the charger on my phone. So this line here is connected to the inverter coming in right here. Uh, now here we have the dip switches on the inverter and previously before I had this connection here you know you had to control things right on here. There is settings like how much charge to bring in when you're charging it that kind of thing. Now after installing this app I realized just how important it is how much more you can do with it. There's so many much more finer controls than when you're controlling it roughly on here. So this is the app right here and basically it enables me to first of all get an overview of what the, uh, the inverter is like, the battery is like, what the, what the temperature of the battery, the voltage coming out, all that. And then I can also see the AC out. I have a more detailed state so it shows me I have 120 volts coming out which is perfect. I suppose the thing that is nice about this is that I can actually control it. I can set the mode, whether it is on or off. I can set it whether it has the charger only or the inverter only. So I do appreciate the fact that I would be able to stand outside. Like if I would be cooking or something, I wouldn't have to go inside my control box and turn on the inverter, which would have to be the case for like with the energy inverter that I was testing out. Um, with this, I can actually do it on my phone. Of course, it's another 80 bucks to spend that you may not realize when you first get this thing. This is as expensive as it is. So it's just kind of an annoying extra thing that you really need if you want to be able to really utilize this thing. Um, like for example, one thing that I, I noticed is here I, I realize you can set what the incoming amperage should be uh, when you're using like shore power. And I realized that when I was charging before and it was coming in a lot. So now I set it so that it will only accept like under a thousand watts. Um, but if you're not careful, if you set it wrong, you can really you know, like bring in way too much. Uh, so there are much finer controls within this, this program. Um, so currently here um, with my system, um, I've disassembled the, uh, the solar panels. I'm not testing that right now. So I have the, uh, the switches off here to the solar charge controllers. So there's nothing coming in from there. The bus bars are live. Um, this, so this is like, this is live and it's connected to the batteries. So I have like the whole system going here right now um, and testing it out. And I have it connected right now to the fridge over there. So this uh, fridge is going to be in the kitchen. It's going to be like on a rollout, like a slide kitchen that you can use indoor or outdoors. So it's nice to realize that after switching to 24 volts, uh, not much is really changing. I mean, it's really just been improvement so far. I can't really think of anything that has actually been a downside to going from 12 to 24 volts. Um, and I do have these step down converters, one going from 24 to 12 and one going from 24 to five volts. Uh, so I'll be able to plug in whatever, uh, you know, uses that, like the Raspberry Pi uses 5 volt. So some things are going to be running through the 12 volt. Not too many things are going to be running on 5 volt. And I'm even going to run some of the LED lights at 24 volts because that's the, uh, the LED strips that I'm going to be using for a lot of the lights. What I'm planning on doing for lighting, uh, a while back we did a project with these kind of Asian inspired lights and I love those. Um, I have them in my house and I really like them and I think they would add such a nice touch inside the teardrop. So I want to make a couple of those and then use these quadro uh, lights and those use 24 volts. Um, so that's what's going to be kind of, you know, add a nice accent and just nice lighting inside and have these kind of wooden accents I think would be really nice inside. I think I might even use those 24 volt ones, um, even like for outside and then put like red gels 
uh, over them because you don't want to use like bright lights outside like for bugs. Red lights is much better for that. Uh, but I think I would be able to use those 24 volt lights um, even for that um, if, if you use those, those kind of gels. Now this Victron charge controller unit here, the MultiPlus, um, especially after using this app here. Now you just realize um, how nice it is to be able to control it with your smartphone. Like, you just see exactly what's going on and how much draw you have coming in. So when you're using appliances, you'll be able to tell exactly how much it's, it's being used. It's really nice. So currently I have four different Victron apps or like views here. I have the MultiPlus, I have two solar charge controllers and I have a shunt here connected to the battery, which enables me to see the current going in and going out of the batteries. Um, but to be able to see the, uh, the inverter and the charger as well, um, um, is, it's much more, there's much more information in here. I guess when I think about all these Victron products that I have here now, that adds up to like 2000 bucks. Um, which is a lot. I mean, it's, this is the kind of system that you could use like in an off-grid cabin or, you know, some of the larger RVs have this kind of system. Um, and, you know, you, you may think that this is like overkill for a teardrop, uh, but you also have to keep in mind like why we're doing this. It's not just like for to create like a, a cute little camper. Um, it's much more to like really utilize the newest technology to create this kind of concept uh, camper. Um, and if you go from that point of view that you want to have like the, the, the best system that you can possibly do, well, this, these are the products that you want to have in it um, because they are top of the line and it's going to give you a, a better system. So. Okay, so this stuff has all been tested and ready to move it out of the way, <laughs> put stuff on that shelf over there um, and clean the space up to bring the camper in and start working on that.